Hey guys, in this video I want to look into ProMB and specifically the side chaining options that it gives you. In case you're unfamiliar, ProMB is an extremely flexible dynamics tool and it allows you to, to manipulate the dynamics of, of anything in, in very exciting ways. So uh, to demonstrate that, I've made this very quick rough arrangement, um, which I'll play in a second. And I'm going to use Pro MB to spice this up a little bit to make it a little bit cleaner, to create some more movement, etc. Let's just um, listen to this. Alright, so what we have is a very simple pad here, which is sort of rising. Um, we have a sort of lead melody, which is just a apple loop, playing dotted notes, and we have an extremely simple bass line. And then, of course, we have some kicks and some snares and some crashes. So um, the first thing I want to do is take a look at these pads and see see what we can do. So let's start very simple. Let's open Pro MB. Um, let's reset this default setting. So we just get a clean instance of Pro MB and let's enable that of course. Now the first thing I'm doing here is I'm listening to bus 17 and bus 17 right now is receiving my full drum track. So if we um, solo this and we create a new band Let's create a full width band, meaning we're processing all the frequencies. Then if I open the expert panel right here, I can either select internal or external. This has to do with your trigger. And here you sort of choose which signal you're using to trigger the compressor or expander because Pro and B can do both. So let's set this to external because we're, we want to listen to an external signal, which is that drum loop. Now, if I um, play this right now, we just hear the pads. And we can see them already moving and um, we can see the gain reduction here shown by that yellow line and we can see that moving on every kick drum but if i click audition i can actually hear that drum loop and i can also go into the analyzer options here and i can enable the analyzer for the sidechain signal which allows me to see that drum loop so we can clearly see the drum uh, the kick right there and we can see the snare Right, so let's start with very basic downwards compression. And I'm using the term downwards compression because Pro MB can do both. And um, what you're probably used to is downward compression, which means that if the signal goes over the threshold, the gain gets ducked or the volume gets ducked, it gets lowered. And compression therefore reduces the dynamic range. And dynamic range is the difference between the quiet and the loud signals. So it's everything in between the, the lowest signal and the highest signal. And if we're reducing that, we're, we're basically pushing the peaks of a file closer towards like the low points of a file, closer towards the, the lower volume levels. And expansion, on the other hand, it expands the dynamic range. So it makes the difference between low and loud signals even bigger. An example of that would be transient designing, where you take the transients of something and you make them even snappier, even louder. We're, we're going to look into that. But for now, let's start with downward compression. And downward compression in Pro MB means that the, that the mode is set to compress and the range is set to a minus value, so that it's going to duck. If I set this above zero, we're doing upwards compression. And upwards compression, what that means is that it's going to react when the signal is below the threshold rather than above the threshold. But again, let's let's take a look at downwards compression first. So I'm going to set the range all the way down. I'll give it a very hefty ratio of about 20. Um, and I'll set the knee to a little bit of a harder knee, like 8 or so. Um, and knee is the, is the curve of, of ducking. It's the shape of the volume ducking. Um, let's set the attack to short. 2% and now we're going to use the release to get this to duck sort of in time with the music so uh, let's first listen to it right now 
So this should sound pretty familiar or, or familiar sort of ducking effect. I'll set the threshold a little bit lower to make that even more extreme. And then if I enable my drums, I can now start um, tweaking the release to make it in time with my kicks. Right, so that's with and this was without. Now this we can do with pretty much any old regular compressor, but the cool thing with Pro MB is two things that make it, well there are more, but two things that I want to look into today that um, make this very exciting for side chaining. One of them is that we have a flexible filter that we can use for our input signal. So right now, um, here on the right side we see band, which means that the filter has the same frequency as the band that we have. So um, we're listening to the full, the full drum loop. But if I set this into free mode, I can actually uh, move my filter around and listen to sort of a different part or a more specific part of the drum loop. So what we could do, like right now we were listening to the full loop, which includes uh, the crash cymbals and the kick drums and the snares and everything like that. But if I set this a little bit lower, let's set this to maybe 400 hertz. So this is just a filter that we see here, right? So now we created a, a high cut or a low pass filter that cuts everything above 400 hertz. And that way we get to hear only our kick drum. And now I'll take the sort of low end, the low cut filter of that, and I'll raise this a little bit, let's say 80 hertz. And that way we're not listening to the very low frequencies. And the reason I'm doing that is because those low frequencies, they, they are longer than higher frequencies by, by nature. And because of that, it can sometimes keep the compressor open a little bit too long. And if we, if we cut a little bit of those low frequencies, we can get more precise sort of ducking results. So let's only listen to this and then we'll go out of audition mode and we'll use this as our, as our trigger signal. Right, so that's pretty solid. Now, what we can do with Pro MB, which you cannot do in most other compressors, and that's because this is a multi-band compressor, is we can we can um, take the right handle here and we can drag this more to the left. And right now we're reducing the width of this band, and um, with width I mean the frequency width, not the stereo width. So now we're only processing everything up until 838 hertz. So let's set that to 800. By the way, um, if we're typing here, we can type um, like frequent, like straight in hertz like that. But we can also type note numbers like C4, or we can even type sequences like C4 plus 20 cents and it will jump there. It's super cool. Um, that's just as a in between. So let's set this to 800. And now we're only docking the low frequencies of these pads. So we're only docking this part. While the high band is still sustained. So let's um, do something else with the high frequencies here. Let's create a new band there and let's extend that all the way up to the high frequencies. Let's solo that to see what we're, what we're processing. And then for this one, let's set it to expand. So like I mentioned, expand can expand the dynamic range. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to do upwards expansion, which means that we have to set our range to a positive value. And we can set it all the way up to 30. Um, what this means is right now, that if the signal goes above the threshold, it's going to boost it by 30 dBs, which is a lot. So because of that, we'll, we'll set our output of this band down. So basically we're lowering the volume 30 dB and then we're going to expand it 30 dB as soon as the signal reaches over the threshold. So let's listen to that. And of course we need to set this to external as well. And while we're at it, let's um, set this to a free filter as well. So let's take a look at our um, the filter of our low band, which is set from 80 to 400 hertz let's do the same thing for our high band let's set the filter from 80 to 400 so that we're listening 
or we're, we're processing the same input signal because these both have independent filters. All right, so um, let's listen to this. So we get more of a plucky sound and we can set the release a little bit shorter still. And let's listen to them both in combination. That's pretty cool, right? So now they're moving in opposite directions. So let's listen to that first with our, with our drum loop. Right, and then let's tr let's try another type. Let's also try to do some uh, downward expansion. So right now we're doing upward expansion, which means that it's going to boost the volume to plus 30 dB. We could just as easily do downward expansion. So in that case, we'll set this to minus 30, and we'll set the output to zero. And in this case, um, it's going to react when the signal is below the threshold. And this, this acts the same way as a gate. When the signal gets quieter than a certain point, it will lower the volume. So let's solo this band and let's um, not listen to the drums. Okay, and let's listen to that in combination. So that's already pretty cool, although it's a little bit boring with like listening to the kick drum and doing that sort of predictable 4-4 side chaining. So um, let's let's take a look at some other loop that I have in here. I have a, a drum loop in there that I just, another Apple loop, and we're not listening to that, but I'm using that, or I, I want to use that to send to the compressor. So let's listen to it for a second so we just hear what it sounds like. So that's some funky stuff. Um, and we're going to use the sort of accent, the rhythm of that to duck these pads. So I'm not sending that to um, an output. I'm just sending that to bus 15, which is going nowhere. And then let's open a new instance of Pro MB. Pro MB. And let's set that up to listen to bus 15. And then again, we'll start with a full width band. And We'll set that to listen to the external sidechain input and we'll audition that just to make sure. All right, and then let's set that straight away to a free filter so we can cut a little bit of those low, fre low frequencies um, and maybe also a little bit of those high frequencies. So we're listening to just this part. All right, and then let's set this to expand and I set the release fairly tight and again we'll go with a strong ratio and a harder need to get more precise results okay and then let's go out of audition mode so now we created a whole new rhythm with this And with some careful tweaking of the threshold, we can we can get like various different rhythms.
right, so that's pretty cool already. Um, I want to show one more trick, and I know I'm going through this all pretty fast, um, but I do have a full course on Pro MB, which you can find on um, courses.subjectsound.com, which is happens to be my website. So the other thing I want to look at is the um, stereo link options or the mid side options of Pro MB, and this is this is really fancy. So um, let's again create a full band, and let's take a look at this slider here. So what we have here is a stereo link function, and stereo linking um, by default is set to 100%, which means that we have two identical compressors for the left and the right channel because we're we're using stereo sounds. So actually on the background we have two different compressors, but right now because the stereo linking is set to 100%, it means that even if the input signal has a loud peak on the left channel, it will duck both compressors at the same time. So we never get a change in the stereo sort of image. If I set this to zero, it means that if my input signal has a louder sort of um, louder peak on, on the left side, for example, it will duck the compressor of the left side more because that one receives a, a higher signal. So more of the signal goes over the threshold and this can cause interesting things in, in the stereo field. Um, but there, this control has one more trick upon its sleeve, which is we can go past 100% and we can only process a certain signal, such as the mid, only the mids or only the sides. So um, let's hear what it sounds like if we're processing the mid signal only. You can now see that we get an M here in this band. So what you can hear is that one of these signals, which is the sides, is always present. We can always hear the sustain there in the sides, but the mid, the mid channel gets ducked every time we, we get a loud signal in our input, which is our, our sidechain 215, this, this purple track right here. So with this, we can create very interesting sort of, sort of stereo expansion options. Alternatively, we could set this to side and then the compressor is going to duck only the side channel. So you can hear it go from the center sort of to to the to the sides of the of the stereo image. So to hear this a little bit better, let's actually um, go back to our regular drum example, which was on bus 17. And then let's audition this. And let's create a full band. All right, and then let's go out of audition. So hopefully you can hear this can create a lot of extra width and a lot of interest basically in, in the stereo field. So those were very quickly some of the things I wanted to show. So again, if you want to get a more in-depth and detailed explanation of this, I have a 10 part video series on Pro MB explaining all the different compression options, both upwards and downwards compression, and the same for expansion. And I'm showing a lot of examples on how to use this to manipulate the dynamics in your song. All right, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.